An external monitor is an essential piece of equipment for digital photographers looking for ultimate control and a refined user experience. In this expert guide, I'll cover not only the basics, but also share professional techniques, including how to use an external monitor to frame, focus, set the exposure and preview your color grading for a photographic workflow that not only gives you better results, but also saves you a lot of time and therefore money. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. We photographers love to spend money on the latest and greatest lenses and cameras. And although those are cool, they rarely change how we take photographs all that much. There are, however, certain pieces of equipment which can really change the way you work on set or in the field. One of them is a recording monitor, like the Memory One Pro on my Nikon D800 over here. This is exactly why I'm sharing this video, as I seriously believe that the following has the potential to really improve your workflow, whether you are working on a commercial project or on a free project. A word of warning though, watching this video will most likely make you purchase a recording monitor, but I'm okay with that, as this is money well spent, as you will see in a minute. Let's get started. An external monitor connects to your digital camera's HDMI port and processes whatever signal the camera is able to provide. Such a device needs a separate battery to operate. Usually, external monitors use NPF type batteries. Those are inexpensive, made by many different brands and come in various capacities. In general, I recommend getting a variety of different sizes, so you can always pick and choose. For example, a large one for long sessions or cold weather and a couple of smaller ones for regular use. It is important to distinguish between a simple external monitor and an external recording monitor. They look identical at first glance, but of course they differ a lot in terms of functionality and sometimes also in terms of features. Think of an external monitor simply as a big screen for your camera. It displays whatever your camera sees in live view at the moment. An external recording monitor is usually more expensive, but comes with the ability to record the signal your camera is sending via the HDMI port and professional assist features for movie makers, which are, however, very useful for photographers as well. I'll talk about those in detail in the next chapter. Depending on model and manufacturer, the signal is recorded to different storage media. The Memory One Pro uses a standard SD card, for example, which is very convenient, while some other recorders use an SSD. I would definitely recommend purchasing a monitor with the ability to record. Even if you don't think you'll utilize the recording function at first, I promise you that you will. Whether you are producing content for social media or you just want to record your workflow in the field, to assess certain camera settings later, the options are just endless. For example, in my review of the OM system OM1 Mark II, this functionality of the Memory One Pro enabled me to show you exactly how the AF system behaved in various situations. Let me emphasize that the exact type of signal the camera is able to provide via the HDMI and the type of signal a given monitor or recorder can handle are very important to check before making a purchase. In general, if you are just looking for an external monitor, then most models will suffice. Cheap recorders, on the other hand, 
might not be able to handle the full range of output signals your camera is able to provide, limiting their usefulness in the best case and making them practically unusable for the intended purpose in the worst case. I've mentioned in the introduction that the functionality of recording monitors can differ drastically and knowing what to look for is crucial. For photographers, an external monitor should be able to zoom the displayed image, provide focus peaking, highlight warnings, as well as LUT previews. False colors are also a nice bonus, and I'll show you how to use those in the next chapter. It is no coincidence that the Memory One Pro recording monitor I'm using for my workflow offers all these features and even some more. So let's take a look how to use those in practice. For us photographers, an external monitor can substantially help us with four key tasks. Framing, focusing, exposure and color grading. The most obvious advantage of an external monitor is of course that it is just a very big display that you can position at any angle. It is therefore just great for framing your shots. Think of it as a digital version of a ground glass. The experience with such a monitor is indeed very similar to working with a large format camera or a V-System Hasselblad and definitely leaks better than what any built-in camera display can provide. A high-end monitor like the Memory One Pro is not only vastly bigger but also a lot brighter than any of these built-in displays. Such a monitor can be viewed in bright sunlight from any distance and at any angle without any issues. On top of that, various guides and grids can be placed in the frame. Unlike in your camera, they can be turned on and off and modified without accessing the camera menu and disrupting your workflow. Welcome to the studio test scene. What you see on the Memory One Pro right now is the live view image of my Nikon D800, which is pointed at this Color Checker Classic aka Macbeth color chart. So this is our test scene. Let me show you my favorite framing assist feature of the Memory One Pro. By tapping the screen once, this overlay comes up and there I can just navigate to what is called the marker menu. And the first item is actually what I want to show you now. There are different aspect ratios which I can overlay onto the live view image. But the one I love to overlay, and I use that actually a lot, is a one-to-one -one user defined aspect ratio. So let's bring this one up and what this does it actually previews a one-to-one -one crop and that is very very useful especially if you want to use your photos for various online media like for example Instagram which loves the one by one aspect ratio. The great thing about this overlay is that I not only get these red bars which indicate the one-to-one -one crop later on but I also get these grayed out areas and that is quite useful so I can still see the full frame but I also see the overlay. So that is my favorite framing trick and if I don't want to see that anymore I just have to navigate to the marker menu again, turn it off and I'm back to normal. And That is as easy as it gets I'd say. With an external monitor which is able to zoom in to the displayed image Achieving critical focus every single time is a breeze, regardless of whether you are using a DSLR in live view or a mirrorless camera. I know that you can zoom in to the live view display on most cameras, but that is no substitute for an external monitor in practice. Let me illustrate why. Without a monitor, you essentially move a focus cursor to where you want to focus and then zoom in. Depending on the camera model you are using, this can be super tedious and slow. For example, the live view focus box of my Nikon D800 moves only very slowly. 
and there are no touch controls. Although I can set the lower magnification to speed things up, I nonetheless have to zoom in to accurately manually focus when I'm using certain ultra-fast lenses. If the subject moves a bit, well, then I'm caught in a tedious, time-consuming procedure of zooming in and out and refocusing again. That is neither fun nor efficient. With the Memory One Pro, however, I can zoom in to every part of the image using the excellent touch screen. I don't have to move a focus cursor around at all. And thanks to the huge 5.5 inch screen, I don't have to zoom in nowhere as much to achieve critical focus. In practice, this means I get the shot faster, more reliably and more efficiently. If you are like me and you love manual focus lenses for portrait sessions, you don't want to tell your client that you missed focus on what is their favorite image just because you are a bit old school when it comes to lenses. At least I don't want to do that. But also for other genres of photography, having a big screen to manually focus with is very helpful and convenient. If you are a landscape or macro photographer, an external monitor is the practical alternative to lugging around your laptop for tethering. If you are a wildlife photographer, you can view your monitor from a comfortable distance with the camera on a tripod and still assess critical focus. But that is not all. Even when I'm using a mirrorless camera with excellent autofocus, the zoom function is just great. What I do when working with the Memory One Pro is that I just let the AF do its thing. And whenever I feel like double checking, I just use the pinch screen and zoom in to the HDMI signal. That is super useful for many situations. But the advantages don't end here. The Memory One Pro is also able to provide focus peaking. So no matter how old my camera is, it now has focus peaking and the threshold is configurable in finer increments than in any of my modern cameras. Before we move on, two bonus tricks when it comes to focus peaking. Tip number one, you can use the AF of your camera and the focus peaking function of the Memory One Pro at the same time to confirm the focusing distance easily. Tip number two, you can activate focus peaking when checking images in playback to quickly determine whether they are in focus or not. That is great for culling images in the field, believe me. In videography, checking the exposure before recording is critical as far less dynamic range is available unless you are recording some raw video format, which is cumbersome and not a good idea in general unless it is specifically required by the client. In photography, things are less critical, as you've got a RAW file to work with, right? Not really. Every positive exposure adjustment in RAW post-production leads to an inevitable loss of quality and time. Therefore, if you want to ensure best image quality and work efficiently, getting the exposure right is key. With an external recording monitor, this is a breeze. A few preliminary remarks about live view first. Regardless of brand and model, the camera tries to match the brightness and colors of the live view preview to the JPEG output, even when you are recording RAW. The RAW file can offer a wider dynamic range than what is displayed in live view, especially in the shadows and sometimes even in the highlights. However, this is not necessarily the case for every camera, every scene and every lighting situation. Controlled testing is required to evaluate the exposure meter calibration and headroom in the highlights, as well as the signal to noise ratio in the shadows. While I love to do exactly these things in order to maximize image quality, 
in professional time critical scenarios, I prefer to take the raw file and process it as little as possible in the camera manufacturer's proprietary raw converter. This gives me a JPEG or TIFF, which is practically identical to the in-camera JPEG and therefore the live view image. So if I can set the exposure perfectly on location, I do not have to move a single slider in post-production and batch adjustments to get a certain look are suddenly feasible, which saves me a lot of time and therefore money. However, getting the exposure perfectly right using just a live view image can be very tough as there is no objective reference point, at least when you don't use an external recording monitor like the Memory One Pro, which is packed with features to do exactly that, giving you an objective reference point to get the perfect exposure. The most basic option is to activate the so-called Zebra Pattern Display. It marks parts of the image which exceed a certain user-defined threshold with a striped pattern. This helps you to avoid clipping the highlights in the final photograph. Before I show you how to set up the Zebra Pattern in the Memory One Pro, let's examine the test scene for a second. The internal exposure meter of the Nikon D800 tells us that this scene is properly exposed at 1 60th of a second with the aperture set to f8 and an ISO sensitivity setting of 100. However, I've got the suspicion that we can push this image even further before clipping anything. And why do I want to do that? Because the brighter the image before clipping, the better the signal to noise ratio. So let's do this with the help of the Zebra pattern. I just tap the screen once and there this crosshair menu is the so-called exposure menu. The first item actually is the Zebra pattern already. Let's turn this one on. Before this feature is usable, we have to calibrate it to the camera. Sounds complicated, but it is not. You just have to look for white lettering on the live view image, which is displayed on the Memory One Pro. And then you just have to go to this minimum slider over here and move it basically until there is no Zebra indication and then move it slightly back until you can see it for the first time appearing on the white lettering. And by doing that, you've just set the Zebra pattern to indicate clipping when the signal coming from the camera is reaching the maximum level. And in this case, it is 99. It is usually 99 for most cameras, but you should double check with yours once you get the Memory One Pro. Okay, let's navigate back to the live view image. And what I can do now is I can basically raise the exposure until I get a clipping warning. So let's do this. 1 60th, 1 50th right now, 1 40th of a second, 1 30th of a second. We are one stop overexposed and still no clipping. Now even one third of a stop higher than indicated by the meter and no clipping. Let's go one step further and there we get the slight clipping warning in the top left corner. I'm going to push it one stop further so you can see it more clearly. Right, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one back until I have a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second set because that's where I don't get any clipping at all. Remember, 1 25th of a second is one stop and one third of a stop higher than what the camera's meter actually indicated. So by utilizing the Zebra pattern, we just improved the image quality of our final photograph drastically. False color is my favorite method to set the exposure. The monitor takes the input signal and measures the IRE unit of every single pixel. Think of it as the luminance level independent of the real color in the final image. The mode basically visualizes exposure and that is quite incredible. Let me show you how this works in practice and how to use it for your photography.
So let's bring up the false color function. It is also found in the exposure menu and you can just turn it on and off. There is no need to calibrate anything. So let's turn it on and there we go. When turned on, every brightness value is transformed into a color. To see which color equals which brightness level, just tap the screen once and you get this color scale on the right hand side. Let me illustrate what those colors mean in practice. First, I'm going to turn this false color display off for a second. I've mapped it to one of the customizable function buttons of the Memory One Pro, so I can quickly turn it on and off. That's super convenient. So let's set an exposure that would basically give us a completely black live view image, like this one. Let's turn the false color display on and leave the scale on on the right hand side. As we can see, purple indicates full black, so basically no signal. When we set the higher exposure, we will eventually move through this scale. So let's do this until there is no purple in our live view image anymore. Ah, okay. As you can see, there is some blue and some teal in our image now. So this means that those parts of the image are now exposed to an IRE value of 5 or 10, because 10 is teal. Let's take a look how this looks. And we can already see that those image areas already give us this faint indication of tonal information above black. So the false color display is correct. But of course, it is way easier to see it with the false color display than by just looking at this live view image. Let's brighten this one even more. We can see gray appearing, which is the next zone. And as soon as we get green, we know that we got about 18% gray in our image. So when we would expose this shot as it is right now, this patch down here would be 18% gray. Let me show you how this image actually looks in practice. Now here's the cool thing. When you look at this image, you would never be able to tell that this patch over here is exposed to middle gray. Quite the contrary, you would assume that middle gray is somewhere around here. Why? Because your brain translates the scene to what you expect to see. And that's the problem. So you need something like false colors to accurately set the exposure by visualizing the exposure for you. Let's move the exposure up. We can see the middle gray moving up the tonal scale. And there we go. Let's set the exposure so that middle gray is on this patch here. Let's turn the false color display off. And this is how the image actually looks. So we now know that this patch is exactly 18% gray. And this is exactly how easy it is to set the exposure with the false color display. But the advantages don't end here because at the top end, we have the color red, which indicates clipping highlights. So let's move things up until we get clipping red. And there it is right on the top where we got the clipping warning earlier using the zebra display only. We get the same indication, but this time colored in red. Let's turn this one off. So by just looking at this image, you wouldn't be able to tell that the image information up here is already clipping. But with the false color display, it is super easy to set an exposure with the highlights just not clipping, but pushing them as far up as possible to get the best dynamic range. When we look at this scene right now, nothing is in the purple region. So nothing is clipping black. We are basically capturing the full dynamic range of the scene and we are doing that by placing the tonal values as bright as possible to get the best possible signal to noise ratio. It is super, super easy to do. Thanks to the false color display of the memory one pro. This is really awesome. In monochrome mode, the memory one pro allows you to do two things. 
you can either set the live view image to luminance only, which gives you a black and white image. That can be very handy for setting the exposure without being misled by colors on the screen. Additionally, the Pro can display each color channel of the RGB signal separately, which can be handy when working under colored stage lights, for example. The monochrome assist feature of the Memory One Pro is also found in the exposure menu. It's the third item. Let's turn it on. It immediately desaturates the HDMI signal and gives us this grayscale image. That is very, very handy to charge the exposure, especially when you are dealing with a very colorful scene, because those colors might throw your brain off and you most likely gonna make bad exposure decisions, but with the monochrome mode, well, you can just get rid of all the colors, check the exposure, and then continue to work with a fully colored display, for example. What is also great about this feature is, as I said previously, that you can preview each color channel separately. So I can take a look at the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel individually to really check where the tonal values of each color channel lie in the image. Very, very convenient when working under colored stage lights because with those it is quite easy to clip one color channel or to set the wrong white balance that actually throws off one of the color channels. But with this function, you can quickly and easily check that. So the monochrome assist feature is indeed very, very powerful and very versatile in practice. For my commercial work, I use custom-made lookup tables for color grading. I'm spending a lot of time and effort to develop these unique looks, and it is worth it, as color is a powerful communicator. In the past, previewing such a look on set or in the field had to be done via tethering. Believe me, lugging a laptop or tablet around is not very convenient. Thankfully, I no longer have to do this, as the Memory One Pro replaces those cumbersome devices. I can load my LUT directly onto the recording monitor and either display it in live view during shooting so I can already adjust white balance and everything to fit the final look, or I can use the Memory One Pro as a preview monitor so the client can immediately pick their favorite look before leaving the session. Especially the latter has significant workflow advantages as it allows me to deliver the previews with the LUT already pasted on. That avoids time consuming back and forth and issues with uncalibrated devices used by the client. To preview a LUT, I just have to navigate to the color menu, 3D LUT, which is the first option, and then turn on LUT. By doing that, I basically load the currently selected LUT to be overlaid. There are some LUTs pre-installed on the Memory One Pro, but those are mostly for color correcting log files. What I'm using right now is a custom made LUT, which I've used for a project in the past. Now with this overlay, I can immediately see how the color graded final image looks like. I can even tweak the white balance setting to match the final look. For example, this one looks very nice. But let's move it back to the initial setting and let me show you how easy it is to preview the exposure in the final image with the LUT already applied. Because some LUTs, they compress the highlights or they compress the shadows or open the shadows and then it is really important to get the exposure right. But with this preview function, you can simply look at the screen and see how the final color grading is gonna look like. Believe me, with this feature, you can nail the exposure right away and you don't have to spend a minute or two correcting the color grading in post-production. You just apply the LUT and you are done. That is so convenient and really a huge time saver. I do that a lot. Now, let me show you a different LUT just that you see the selection process and how it looks. So those are the default selection LUTs. I'm not gonna load 
one of those, but I just wanted to show you those. So I'm going to go to the user LUTs and there is another one, for example, tarnished teal 225, which is, by the way, one of those LUTs which compresses the highlights. So let's set the exposure for this one. I can basically go a bit brighter here and still get a good looking image. And that is really the usefulness of the 3D LUT feature of an external recording monitor in a nutshell. An external recording monitor is exceptionally useful in the once in a lifetime purchase. By getting a high quality model like the Memory One Pro, compatibility with all future cameras is ensured as long as they have an HDMI port. An external monitor brings a bright, clear, feature-packed live view experience to every camera in your kit. If you are like me and love using not only the latest and greatest, but also classic digital cameras, a recording monitor is like a hardware upgrade for those oldies. In hindsight, it is quite ridiculous that it took me so long to get a good external recording monitor, as it is probably the single most useful piece of equipment I've added to my kit in a long time. So this is a definitive recommendation. Do you own a recording monitor? If so, how do you use it for your photography? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.